Hey everybody, good afternoon, Terry White here, and I'm here doing just kind of a, like a random special broadcast uh, to show you guys how to work with Apple's new Pro Raw, which is a new format um, for the iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max. And the reason why this is like kind of a big deal, kind of important, is that it's the first time Apple's ever allowed you to photograph or shoot in RAW directly in your iPhone camera app. Now, of course, um, we had Adobe here with Lightroom. We've been doing this with the Lightroom app on mobile pretty much since day one. So uh, we've been doing it for years, basically, for I think I, since the iPhone 7 Plus, something to that effect that we were uh, able to shoot in RAW. But now you don't have to shoot in the Lightroom uh, app anymore. You still can, but you don't have to. And you can now shoot RAW uh, directly on your iPhone in the iPhone app. And if you do shoot RAW and you bring those images into Lightroom or Lightroom Classic, you will have all the advantages of RAW files that you have with your DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. So that's the big deal is that you can don't have to think about it. You can shoot RAW whenever you want and have, uh, have that ability. Now, I'm going to be doing a full-on RAW versus JPEG masterclass this Friday on my regular masterclass shot or, or slot, which is 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, uh, this Friday at b.net slash Adobe Live. That's where I normally do those. And, of course, it'll be on you know simulcast to my YouTube channel and Facebook group and all that. All right, but I see some folks in the chat. So, Daniel, welcome. Uh, Ravenel, welcome, uh, Jason and Andrew, and I think I saw Victoria pop in there as well. So welcome, everyone. Glad to have you here, and uh, glad to see you on coming in from the various different spots that you're coming in from. Uh, so with that said, let me go ahead and uh, dive right in. We're going to keep this short because I know uh, some of you might be wanting to watch uh, uh, Scott Kelby's The Grid Live, which starts in about 11 minutes. So let's see if I can keep it kind of short so that I don't, I don't preempt that too much. So first and foremost, we're going to go over how to set it up and then how to shoot in RAW and then how to work with those RAW images. All right. So let me um, make sure my Do Not Disturb is on and also let me make sure I get, show you my, my screen. All right. Let me pop over to my uh, computer here. Not that one, that's the one I want. Okay, and now that I've got my computer up, let me also go ahead and switch over to my phone so you can see it. There we go, let's bring that over. And there's my phone. Okay, now I'm gonna go full screen so you guys can get a bigger preview of the phone, uh, just so you have that. And uh, there we go. All right, so I got my phone up. I've got Lightroom open in the background on my computer, but we're gonna start on the phone. So first things first, um, you have to update to iOS 14.3. 14.3 is the one that has the um, has the uh, Pro Raw feature, and of course, it has to be on one of the one of the phones that supports Pro Raw. Which currently there are only two phones that support it, and that's the 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max. All right, so once you got one of those phones and you have 14.3 installed on it, go to settings. And in your settings, you're going to scroll all the way down. It's all the way down here. It's all the way down here to camera. So there's an actual uh, specific setup for your camera. So when you tap on camera, this is where you go in and choose your recording format for like 4K or 1080p or what you want your slow mo to be in and what 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 you basically what you want all your camera settings to be on. But it, you don't you know at first glance you don't see anything that says raw because it's under formats. So when you tap on formats, that will let you see the previous formats, which were high efficiency or most compatible. So basically an HEIC, HEIF file and an HEVC format were the high efficiency formats. Most compatible would be JPEG. But now down at the very bottom, you see Apple Pro Raw and it is off by default, which is kind of weird because I'm gonna show you that when you actually go into the camera, you can toggle it, so I don't know why they why they leave it off by default. But let's go ahead and turn it on. And that's it, it's just a toggle. You turn it on and it stays on until you turn it off again. And then um, you can uh, get out of it once you swipe out of it, and then you go into your camera. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna go ahead and take a shot. So this is just the regular high efficiency shot. And then we're gonna go ahead and tap on raw at the very top. There we go. 
So now we got it in raw. And uh, just so it's toggling that on or off. All right, so off, that's with the line through it. And on um, with the, uh, without the line through it is gonna go ahead and shoot it in raw. All right, that's it. Um, so once you have toggled that on or off, you will then be able to go in and um, see those on your camera roll. All right, so if I go to my camera roll now, which is in my photos app, and I go to recents, I will see uh, that one shot I just took at my desk, and I will then see the other shots that I just took. And there they are, and, it, and it's syncing those to iCloud, and that's great as well. Now, if I scroll all the way, um, if I were you know, scroll all the way down, I'm seeing those new shots, but then if I were to get out of this and I were to pop over to Lightroom, I've got Lightroom set to automatically import any new photos. So any new photos come in, and as you can see, they're starting to come in now. Those four photos or five photos just popped in, and now we can see, and you can see the first one is a DNG, the next one's not a DNG, the third one is a DNG, and the fourth one's not a DNG. So that was me toggling it on or off. And, um, you know, you, you basically, if you left it on, they would all be DNGs. And if you left it off, they would all be high efficiency formats. So now, uh, what's, the really, what's the real big difference? And again, I'm going to go over this in detail this Friday. But if we go to one of the ones that's the high efficiency format, it's basically already been processed. It's been processed by, uh, by your camera, by your device. So this one's already been processed. It's a smaller file. It, um, what else can I say about it? It's, it's like a JPEG, but it's already been processed. It's already got everything done to it. Now, if we swipe left, this is the high efficient, or this is the raw one. And this one, as you can see, even the, 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 the tone is a little different on it because this one is unprocessed. So this one doesn't have anything done to it, but you get all of your raw capabilities and your full uh, quality from your image. So, for example, if I tap on, um, if I tap on my edits down here, this is where I want to be. Uh, if we go into, for example, color, then I can see for white balance that I've got the ability to choose my full spectrum of white balance because with a raw file, your white balance is not set in stone. So you can go choose um, what what format or what it was under. So if I chose daylight, I would get that white balance, which is a bit off. If I chose cloudy, I'd get that white balance again, which is a bit off because I'm using like an LED light. If I chose flash, that's, these are all a bit off because these are not the um, proper white balance for the lighting I was on. But I can go custom and go pick a white balance and have it choose that white balance. So I'm getting all my basic uh, raw capabilities um, shooting this with my iPhone. All right, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and pop out. And um, I'm going to go in and uh, just check and make sure I don't have any questions here. Dun, 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 dun. Lots of hellos, lots of people coming in. Cool, cool, cool. And I'm going to go in now and um, I see that these are syncing. So it's still uploading a couple of photos. But if I go back to my desktop now and I go to my all photos, those are starting to come into my desktop as well. So I'll give it another second and that last photo will pop in like it just did. And those have now synced directly from my phone, importing them into Lightroom, synced up to Lightroom's cloud, and now back down to my desktop and they would also be on my iPad and they would be everywhere else. So again, if I were to go into each one of these, this was the HEIC format, the high efficiency. And if I were to just arrow over, this is the raw one that we've already begun to edit. So again, I get all my raw capabilities shooting uh, with my phone for, for the first time in the Apple camera. So that's the big deal, is that I don't have to switch to the Lightroom camera. You know, you may be in a hurry, you may want to get a shot, and now you can get that proper shot directly. All right, now, if we were to go in and um, take a look at uh, some of the other shots I've taken, let's go back out. And I've got an Apple Pro Raw album, which actually, let me go ahead and add those into it. And four minutes ago, let's go grab these and put these in that album. 
there we go. And now I've got all my pro raw shots together. So I started shooting these yesterday. Uh, I upgraded the day before, but I really got outside and started shooting some. And so again, some of the comparisons, this is a um, uh, HEIC format. It looks pretty well processed because it is versus the raw right next to it, which looks kind of flat and looks undeveloped or unprocessed. And that's the whole advantage of raw is that you can now process this shot the way you want. So I think I had a comparison here that I kind of like better. Let's go into these two. Yeah. So for example, um, that is the DNG. This is the one that's uh, processed already. If I were to go ahead and zoom in and kind of just look at some of this grass here, uh, the grass looks slightly out of focus, but if I were to go into the raw file, it looks just so much sharper and so much more detailed. And again, this is unprocessed. I haven't done anything to this shot yet, but same camera. I can definitely tell a difference in the details looking at the raw, which is this one versus the HEIC, which is that one. So big difference there. All right, next up, let's go ahead and take a look at um, some of the processing that we can do. So again, if I go back to the raw file, now let me show you the difference too. If I go to the HEIC, which is this would be considered like a JPEG, and I go to the white balance, notice I don't get my full spectrum of white balance because the white balance has already been locked in. That's all I can do as I can do auto, I do custom, but I don't get those choices of daylight, cloudy, so forth and so on, um, because all of those characteristics are built in. If I go look at the file size, which is another big consideration, the file size for this HEIC is basically just a little over three megabytes. If I go look at the same raw file, it's 30 megabytes. So same resolution, 4,032 by 3,024, 12, meg 12 megapixel camera, but you're capturing 10 times the amount of detail in RAW that you would be with the high efficiency format. All right, so now if I were to go and again, start processing this photo, I could choose, first of all, a RAW profile, another advantage. Uh, if I go back to that HEIC, I don't get those RAW profiles. I only get my artistic ones. Uh, but if I go to this one, I get all my raw profiles. So I can say, for example, this is a landscape shot. I could go in and choose my white balance that it was daylight or it was cloudy. They both kind of look the same. And then I can also go ahead and auto uh, tone this to kind of bring some of those blue colors back into the sky. And I'm really starting to work with this just like I would any of my other DSLR or mirrorless camera shots. So big difference. Um, hey, I'm looking at this here. When will a Photoshop 21 that works to make two point lines? I'm not sure, uh, Kirill, that I understand that question. So if you could uh, just give me a little bit more detail, maybe I can answer it. But if it's a when will something come out, I can't even answer a feature that's not announced yet. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, I'm just making sure, good information. Glad you like it, Maurice. Uh, hello, Jimmy, Jimmy Washington. And everyone else here, I see lots of hellos. Just making sure I'm not missing any questions. All right. So again, we're going to do this in more detail on Friday, but I just kind of want to give you guys a heads up of what it's like to work um, between the two formats. Now, you can the, the way I like to look at it is if it if it's a shot that matters, I'm going to tap that raw button and shoot it in a raw. I'm just shooting a selfie or something that's uh, for social media that you know I don't need a lot of detail in. I'm probably going to leave it on HEI. HEIC or HEIF. So that's going to give me that high efficiency, smaller file, not taking up a bunch of space, kind of already processed because it's not that important. Before when I'm going out with my phone now and I'm shooting shots, they're important. And all I have is my phone with me. I now have the ability to just tap raw on the screen and start taking those shots. All right. So with that said, um, that's it. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and turn it over to uh, uh, the folks over at the gridlive.com the grid live at Kelby one. I was going to say gridlive.com, but I don't think that's the URL. Um, so go to Kelby one live.com and you guys go, go ahead and see the grid. Uh, I think they're going to be doing blind photo critiques over there. And again, I don't want to steal too much of their thunder and overlap their show. All right. So join me this Friday uh, at 8, 11 a.m. Eastern 8 a.m. Pacific time where we're going to be doing um, my photography masterclass at B for B, B hands, B.net, B E dot net slash live. 
Um, and then you can join me there for the photography masterclass where we're going to be diving deeper into raw versus JPEG. I'm going to be showing you shots from um, my mirrorless camera, shots from the iPhone, really doing comparisons, really diving deep into what can be done uh, with one versus the other and why you would shoot in one versus the other. Because, you know, you might think, well, just shoot in raw all the time. That's not necessarily the case for a lot of people. So it just depends on what you need. Uh, and what your end result is going to be, and, and in many cases, how fast you need to shoot, because shooting in RAW with those 30 megabyte files versus three megabyte files uh, can also slow things down, depending on how many shots you need to take, especially for my sports shooters out there. All right, so with that said, cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody.